Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video, we got a couple of very interesting updates, and the first one is... Rubial Muscara is out of Prague Pro. <laughs> I mean, is anybody really surprised by this? The pullout king is still the pullout king, Nexilla, man. I mean, I knew this was gonna happen, of course. He pulled out of like, how many, 20 shows at this point? I mean, <laughs> this guy is crazy. Why he, keep, why he keeps announcing all these shows he's gonna do and, and doesn't do any of them? What, what, what is he doing? What is he trying to do? I don't know. I mean, maybe at this point all of his sponsors are gonna drop him. I mean, I saw this physique update from him yesterday, and, and here he definitely didn't look like he's uh, three weeks out. By the way, this girl in the middle right here is from Macedonia over here. I know her personally. We competed at many shows together. She's basically the star of wellness over here in European IFBB, and she decided to switch to MPC, I believe, or IFBB Pro League if she wins her pro card, and she's sponsored, I believe, by Yava Labs and coached by Chris Cormier, so here she is with these, with these two guys right here. Her name is Mary Akievska, you can find her on IG, but the comments on this post are hilarious. You can think what people are saying. <laughs> Anyways, as far as Rubiel right here, uh, again, not in shape. Look at his quads, no separation. I mean, he's in okay off-season conditioning, but uh, for three weeks out, no, no, definitely not lean enough. So, what is the problem? Why is he not ready again? Is his gear fake? Or is it something else? Anyways, uh, who is the best bodybuilder on Instagram page uh, posted this? They're saying a confirmed absence from Prague Pro by Rubio Mosquera. He is out. Rubio Mosquera confirmed that he will not participate in the Prague Pro 2024. Uh, now, he didn't post this anywhere on his Instagram, on his YouTube, on uh, his coach's Instagram or YouTube, Francisco Aspin. So I don't know where this page got this information, uh, who confirmed it. But uh, they are they're very accurate with their information. They're never really wrong. So I'm sure they, and they have context as well. So I'm sure this is correct. And of course, like uh, judging by his look at three weeks out, uh, of course. He's not gonna be doing the show and, uh, you know, versus Martin Fitzwater, he would not even win. But it would be, you know, a good comparison. It would be a good show if he was there. But uh, he decided to pull out again. The last two shows he pulled out of were Italy and UK. And his coach actually said that the reason why they're skipping Italy is because uh, it will be like a big trouble to compete over there and then to UK as well, uh, since he can't beat Hunter Labrada. So it's gonna have to be UK, and then uh, after UK, or actually before UK, they decided not to do that show either, uh, because uh, he wouldn't be at his best. And then they said that there is enough time until Prague Pro, he can get in shape for that show. That's where he turned pro, his sponsor is EVLS which is, uh, you know, organizing that show, EVLS Prague Pro, uh, and um, yeah, we were waiting to see what he's gonna look like, how his prep is gonna go, but like in all of his physique updates and, and videos of training and everything, he looked like he was uh, deep into his off-season, and now after seeing this post, it became very clear to me that uh, there is no chance of uh, Rubiel doing the Prague Pro, and I wonder... What was uh, his thought process? When did he decide that he's not gonna do the show? And what the hell is the reason? Is it just him being lazy and not willing to do the work? Even though he's under a contract, even though he announced it publicly, I don't know what is the reason, but in this case, I don't think it's uh, the coach's fault. Like with Nick Walker, in my opinion. You guys think that also it's Nick Walker's fault for him not doing the Mr. Olympia, but I think that's Matt Jansen's fault because he made an announcement, public announcement, that he's retiring from coaching because he wasn't focused on his athletes. So that's a good excuse for Nick. I really don't blame Nick, but in this case, I'm pretty sure it's just Nick Zilla, who is simply not willing to do the work, to get shredded, to get lean. He's probably too comfortable, you know, having a bunch of sponsors, uh, doing well without competing, but man, like, he lost all the integrity in the world. I don't know if he's ever gonna be taken seriously by fans, by show promoters, by IFBB, I mean, this guy is a joke, basically, at this point. I, I don't know if there is a bodybuilder that pulled out of that many shows, especially like in one year, guys. In one year only, he pulled out of so many shows. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. It's, it's, I don't know what to say, really. 
Again, I was definitely not surprised when I saw this, I'm sure you weren't either, and the next time it happens, and it will happen, it will happen for sure, the next time this happens, I probably won't even make a video. And when he announces his next show, I probably shouldn't make a video about that either, because, you know, there are like 90% chances that it's not gonna happen. So, guys, down below in the comment section, tell me what do you think, tell me what do you think is the reason for him doing this. Not just for why he's not ready for this show, but like, why is he doing this? Why is he announcing a bunch of shows and not doing any one of them? Is his goal to become the person that pulled out of the most shows in the history of bodybuilding? I mean, he's probably gonna go down as the greatest in that regard. So guys, once again, tell me down below, what do you think? Alright, next up, we got a physique update from Rafael Brandau at two weeks out of Romania Pro. Romania Pro is actually on November 9th, and uh, here you can see what he looks like, and I'm thinking, it, it looks like he is getting in, in better shape, in better conditioning. And here he says he's uh, had four low-carb days. And that's, I mean, I don't know what low-carb uh, means for Rafael, but like, I remember for the Iron Classic prep, his low days were like 300 grams of carbs. And his high days were like 600, I don't know. Like, he was eating a bunch of food. He has a crazy fast metabolism. So, I, I think he's gonna get in shape easy. And I think he should get in better conditioning for this show. Now, he's not gonna be facing any uh, mass monsters. As far as I know, as of right now, the only competition he's gonna have is uh, Horse MD. Maybe Chris Bumstead. That's most likely not gonna happen, but like there is a slight possibility. And I'm not saying that to do to, to, I don't know, do a clickbait. I didn't mention it in my video, in my in my thumbnail or my title. I'm just saying it. I know the chances are very slim, slim to none, but you know, somebody big is doing that show apparently, based on what Stefan Kinsel and the Brett Wilkins said. So, you know, maybe it's Chris Bumstead. Anyways, let's forget about that for now. Rafael Brando. I think this is probably gonna be a pretty easy qualification for him uh, for the next year's Mr. Olympia, but I actually forgot one guy he's gonna have at that show, and that's Akeem Williams. Now, he beat Akeem Williams at the Arnold Classic and at the Mr. Olympia, so he's most likely going to beat him again, but you never know, maybe he diets down a little bit too much, loses size and fullness, and shows up smaller, and Akeem brings his 110%, and he beats Rafael. Maybe that's gonna happen. That's a possibility. As far as Rafael losing against the horse MD, I don't see that happening. No, not really. But like, could Chris Bumstead beat Rafael Brandau? I think he absolutely could. I mean, I don't think there is that big of a difference in size. I know some of you guys think there is a huge gap, but I don't see it, to be honest. Maybe he has bigger arms, maybe bigger back. But like from the front, size of the legs, chest, lats, I don't think the difference is huge. Yeah, sure, he's bigger, but like imagine Chris Bumstead like peaking for the show and after doing those, uh, how many, four weeks of rebound after the Mr. Olympia. Maybe he's gonna come a, a little bit closer, and with Chris's details and basically a perfect structure, I can see him beating Rafael and winning Romania Pro. Again, it's it's not gonna happen, most likely, but I'm just speculating what would happen if, if that went down. Anyways, I think Rafael is the favorite to win this show. Let's take a look at Horse MD, because he posted something as well. What can we expect from this guy? I mean, last year at Romania Pro, he was actually amazing. He was in really good condition, and, you know, he was big, especially lower body. Uh, back was bad, but, like, arms are pretty big, chest is solid. Uh, his waist, it, it was actually much smaller before when he was like uh, still trying for classic physique when he was smaller, but now that he got bigger, you know, the waist also got a little bit blockier, but still, it's not a big waist. If his upper body grew a little bit more, especially like the lats, his waist would also look a, a lot smaller because he has massive legs, but, um, you know, he has aesthetics, for sure, he has massive quads, bigger than Raphael's, I think. Now, as far as conditioning, again, I don't know what to expect, because yes, at Romania Pro, he was, he was in shape, but then, at the Arnold Classic, he failed miserably. He was, like, six weeks out, eight weeks out. So, at this point, at two weeks out, do I think he's already shredded? No. No, it doesn't really look like that. His separation needs to get much, much deeper. I would like to see thinner skin, more details, more conditioning... But, you know, there is a good possibility that he's going to be on, 
you know, maybe not super peeled, but in, in, in presentable shape, unlike Arnold Classic, where he looked embarrassingly uh, soft. So I think this could be an okay version of Horse MD. Do I think he's going to be shredded? No. Do I see him beating Akim or Rafael or Chris Bumstead if he shows up? No. No, I don't see him winning that show. So unlucky, you know, Rafael is doing that show. So he's going to win the qualification for the Mr. Olympia. After that, we got Prague Pro and that's going to be won by Martin Fitzwater. I don't know what other uh, pro shows are left after that. I think maybe Japan or Egypt, I'm not sure, to be honest, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look very promising for Horse MD as far as qualifying for the next year's Mr. Olympia, uh, but you guys tell me down below, what do you think, what do you think about Rafael's shape, and what do you think about the pullout king, Nexilla? Tell me down below in the comment section, guys, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more bodybuilding content like this, and thank you guys so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.